Hey friends, my name is Brenda Carruth and welcome to your chapter five study, um, Being Satisfied with Self. So this study had us looking at the sin of pride and delving into just how much God opposes that sin of pride and how it divides us from him and from others. And I have to be honest, when I first started the lesson, I thought, hmm, I don't think I struggle with pride too much. How humble is that, right? But as I got into the lesson, God revealed to me just those ways that pride can creep into our thoughts and our minds and our motives. And so I was convicted. And um, if you were as well, let's go into that promise that if we confess our sin before God, he is gracious and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's walk into the study under that promise. I always find it helpful to look at um, a definition of a word as I go to, into study. And Merriam-Webster defines pride as one, a feeling that you respect yourself and deserve to be respected by other people. Well, that's not bad. Two, a feeling that you are more important or better than other people. And there's that unhealthy pride. And three, a feeling of happiness that you get when you or someone you know does something good, difficult, etc. And we see Paul um, in writing to the Corinthians exhibiting that kind of a pride. He says to them, I have great confidence in you. I take great pride in you. So that's that healthy pride. We can take pride in ourselves and our spouse and our children, friends, coworkers when they do something well. But when we begin to build ourselves up and placing ourselves above others, and maybe even God, that's when pride becomes sin, the opposite of humility. In our, set, in our study, we looked at the passage in Isaiah 14 and saw that pride is an I will thinking and living. I will make myself more important than others and God. C.S. Lewis said, a proud man is always looking down on things and people. And of course, as long as you're looking down, you can't see something that's above you. So when we're looking down at others, we can't see God above us. We are to boast about God and what he does. Jeremiah 9 24 says, but let him who boasts, boast about this, that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. So when we take credit for the good um, that we do and elevate ourselves above others, we are taking glory away from God and devaluing other people. Philippians 2, 3 says we are to build others up, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. And Ephesians 2.10 reminds us that we are God's workmanship and that he has equipped us to do the good works that he has planned for us. Any good that comes out of us is because of the Lord working through us. So this is one of those manifestations of pride when we build ourselves up and place ourselves above others or above God, taking away the glory from God and then making ourselves better than others. I have been learning in the last few years to hold criticism and compliments very loosely. For a long time, if I got criticized, that would bring me very low. And then if I got a compliment, I would think, oh, okay, I'm the greatest person in the world. So I was living in this up and down, up and down. And God revealed to me that I was allowing what people were saying about me to make me feel better or to take me down and make me feel like I was the worst person in the world. So as I hold both the good and the bad loosely, I can place my worth in God's hands and who I am as a daughter of him. A second manifestation of sinful pride is doing, believing that by doing the right things, we can earn God's grace and approval or manipulate him into doing what we want, which is quite the opposite of God's truth. James 4, 6 says, but God gives us more grace. That is why the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. 
and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by work, so that no one can boast. In our lesson, Naaman learned that his healing and his salvation could not be earned by his doing. He had to lay down his deadly doing, and we too must lay down our deadly doing. My husband and I have two grown daughters, and when they were in high school, I had this practice where in the morning when they would drive off to school, I would pray for their safety. And then the Lord convicted me that I really needed to let go of that practice. It's not that he didn't want me to pray for them. My motive in my head was, if I pray for them, God would keep them safe. And I was creating this unhealthy equation. If I do this, then God will do this. And that's not true. That's saying I have control over God or I'm trying to manipulate him. It's saying if I go to church every day, then my son will be saved. Or if I pray every day, then my mother is going to be healed. Yes, God wants us going to church and praying and bringing things before him. But my motive when praying for my daughters when they would leave each morning was to say, okay, God, I'm taking this power and I'm going to pray and therefore you're going to keep them safe. And he said, no, I need to let that go. Um, and I did, which was hard, but I still continued to pray for them. But I had to t get rid of that unhealthy equation of the, if I do this, then God will do this. <clears throat> That's just a perceived notion that we have that power <clears throat> or that we're going to try to manipulate the Lord. And that's not where he is. All that we do must be done through the power of God and to his glory. And this will keep him hum keep us humble. The third manifestation of pride I want to unpack today is comparing. When we walk into a room of other people, when we scroll through social media, we're having a conversation with somebody, if we begin to compare ourselves with other people and start to um, think that we're superior over them, we are falling into the sin of pride. Galatians 3, 3 and 4 says, If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. In our study, we had the example of the Pharisee and the tax collector and how the Pharisee was comparing himself to the tax collector. And as long as the tax collector felt morally superior, he would never recognize his need for God and his need for forgiveness. And when we do that as well, when we consider ourselves morally superior over others, we're in that same place of that unhealthy, sinful pride. I believe gossip and perfectionism also fall under this category. So when we gossip, we are essentially saying, I am better than this person. When we say, can you believe what so-and-so did? We're saying, I would never do that. And we are elevating ourselves over that person. And perfectionism is that irrational expectation that I am not going to make a mistake, that I'm going to be perfect. Or even we might put that on our family members. So I remember when our girls were really young, and worrying about what was going to happen if they made a mistake or made a poor choice and how that was going to reflect on me. And so as I worked through that, the Lord revealed to me that they are their own persons and they're going to make mistakes as well as I'm going to be making mistakes and help, help me to let go of that um, over some years. But I still struggle with that. If I make a mistake, what are you going to think of me? And again, that's that pride seeping into my thoughts and my heart. And I need to bring that to the Lord and ask him to help me through that. So when I say, um, when I make a mistake and I struggle with that, I'm basically saying I can be perfect like God and uh, we need to let go of that pride. So what do we do with this sin of pride? Well, we pray and we ask God to make known to us those places in our hearts and our minds where sin um, pride has crept in. <clears throat> we can ask the Spirit for help in examining our motives for everything that we do. Are we trying to elevate ourselves over others? Are we doing in order to get something from God? Or are we comparing ourselves with others in an attempt to feel better about ourselves? 
These are hard questions to ask ourselves, but God is gracious with us. And if we truly want him to change us, he will. Sanctification is a process. And it's a process that will not be completed until we stand before the Lord in heaven. And of course, how do we deal with sin and pride? Love. We looked at this passage in our study. 1 Corinthians 13 passage talks about living a life full of love. And when we're full of love, we can't be full of pride. <clears throat> the passage from the message says, love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't uh, want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first. So God is enough and he has created you just as he wants you to be. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to help us live our lives so full of love. There is no room for pride that you will help us build up others, not ourselves, that you will teach us to not rely on doing or comparing, but to rest in your grace and provision. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Amen. God bless you.